there, fantastic friends. Welcome to Kids Church. I'm your pal, Polly the Prehistoric Pelican, and... Teacher Sarah, ready to dive into the wonders of God's love with all of you. Hey, Polly, guess what? Jesus loves us even more than a pelican loves the sea. Oh, that's a whole lot of love. Let's soar into worship to celebrate our amazing friendship with Jesus. Yippee! Yippee! Whenever I'm in need and I'm looking for help, God, you're always there for me. Wherever you lead me, I can follow. When you are in control, I got one life to live and I wanna live it your way. Oh yeah, I do what I should do. When you help me choose, I got one life to live and I wanna live it your way. Oh yeah, I got one life to live and I wanna live it your way. Oh yeah, one life to live and I wanna live it your way. Whenever I'm lost and I don't know where. Welcome to Story Lab. This week we're taking a look at what can transpire when your words get away from you. Hey, I'm Carter. And I'm Zeke. This month we're talking about how we can trust God to help us do what's best. That's prodigious. Proto what? Prodigious, uh, wonderful or marvelous. That's enough. Mr. Dictionary. So choosing the right word is imperative. Just, just, no, no, it's indispensable. No, no. It's crucial. Necessitous. Compulsory. Sometimes the best word is a simple one. Ugh, preposterous. But true. You lummox. Congratulations. Your Batraka Mayamaki has initiated a grandiose word game. I have so many questions. Yeah, like what is Batraka... Bat but Trakamayamaki is a ridiculous or pointless quarrel. Oh. The rules of the grandiose word game are simple. Whoever correctly guesses the definition of the most big words triumphs or wins. Ready? I guess. I was born for this. You have five seconds to choose the correct word definition. Carter is first. Yes, I'm up. First word, obsquatulate, A, to leave, 
giant prints like Bigfoot's. B. To slice up a squash. Or C. To leave abruptly. Uh, Bigfoot isn't a thing, so uh, a squash. Uh, no, no, leaving. Uh, uh, a squash. Incorrect. To absquatulate is C. To leave abruptly. <laughs> you didn't know either. Yeah. Number two, Zeke. Nudie assertion. Is it A, the day before yesterday? B, a flower from the nightshade family? Or C, an implement for serving pasta? Uh, oh. Oh, uh, the flowers, the days, the, uh, the, A. Correct! <laughs> Nudie assertion is a term referring to the day before yesterday. Uh, yes! Lucky guess. Number three, Carter. Bumfuzzle. Is it A, to confuse or perplex? B, to remove a large amount of fur from a dog? Or C, to sit suddenly? <laughs> you look confused. No, actually I know this one. To confuse or perplex. Correct! Bumfuzzle means to confuse or perplex. I'm bumfuzzled that you knew that. Number four, Zeke. Wittershins. Is it A, a leg injury? B, counterclockwise? Or C, someone who is a poor loser? Uh, poor loser. Oh, that's going to be you. Speak for yourself. You Wittershins. Incorrect. Wittershins means counterclockwise. Aw, oh, man. You are tied at one point each. Last question is an all play. Whoever answers first correctly wins. The word is pandiculation. Is it A, the reverberation of a brass bell? B, a wrestling match between two pandas? Or C, the act of stretching and yawning upon waking. Pandiculation? Who comes up with this stuff? Uh, I, I don't know. Uh, B, B. Incorrect. Uh, the answer uh, is C. Pandiculation is the act of stretching and yawning upon waking. Rats tied for the loss. Or the win. Oh, we gotta choose our words better. Speaking of which, it's time for... The Story Before the Story. Today, we're in the book of Proverbs, which is a collection of wise sayings, many from King Solomon. Solomon became king at a very young age. He was worried about leading an entire nation with so little experience. One night, God spoke in a dream and told Solomon that he could have any gift he wanted. Now, Solomon could have asked for money or power, but instead, Solomon asked God for wisdom so he could be the best leader for his people. God listened and honored Solomon by making him the wisest man on earth. Many of the things Solomon learned and said were collected, along with other wisdom. The sayings, called Proverbs, are short sentences or stories that help people make wise decisions in their everyday lives. Which is where our story starts. Take it away. Hey everyone, I'm Brian. That was four words right there in case you're counting. Oh, and another 10. Did you know the average person speaks between 6,000 and 16,000 words every single day? Blah, 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 blah. Hmm, sounds exhausting, huh? Hmm. But we speak all that word soup without even thinking about it. And to top it off, you probably have around seven to 10,000 words in your vocabulary to choose from every time you open your mouth. Mm-hmm. All of this comes down to something really, really important. You ready for this? Words are like a superpower. I'm serious. We can read about it in one of the wise proverbs that Solomon collected. The words of thoughtless people cut like swords, but the tongue of wise people brings healing. Did you hear that? The words of thoughtless people cut like swords, but the tongue of wise people brings healing. Every single time you open your mouth, you have the power to do this. <laughs> or this. Uh, what you say is so powerful that it can cut somebody deeply or help them heal. Think about this. You've probably skinned your knee before, 
Ouch. But once your knee healed up, have you thought about it that much? Nah, probably not. It's all good. Now, has anybody ever made fun of you? Those words can cut really, really, really deep. You may not be able to see any wound, but it's there. And this kind of hurt doesn't heal easily. Even if it happened a long time ago, I bet you still think about it sometimes. Mean words can still hurt all this time later. The words of a thoughtless person cut like swords. We don't usually mean to hurt others with our words, but we just don't think first. Thoughtless words come in all kinds of shapes and sizes. You know thoughtless words when you hear them. Wow, I can't believe you can't tie your own shoelaces. No one wants to play with you. Oh, you're really bad at math. <sighs> you've probably been hurt by some words like those, and you've probably said some of those things too. That's why before you say anything, it's wise to do this first. <sighs> Stop. That's better. Before you speak, stop. Think first, even if it's for half a second. If what you're about to say is thoughtless or hurtful, keep your mouth zipped. Or even better, think about what you might say instead. Hey, cool shoes. Need help with the laces? You seem a little sad. Wanna hang out with us? I know you can get this, let me quiz you. Here's something else to practice. If you think something positive about someone, take a few seconds to actually say it. I love your smile. That story you wrote is super creative. Now I get it. Controlling what you say is not easy, especially if you try to do it on your own. That's why we all need help. When we follow Jesus, God sends the Holy Spirit to live inside of us and provide power and guidance. And over time, as we rely on God's Spirit, it'll become easier to live out what we find in Proverbs. The words of thoughtless people cut like swords, but the tongue of wise people brings healing. The end. Two words. Yikes, that hits right in the vocal cords. It's so easy to say whatever pops into my head. Yeah, it's like my mouth is on autopilot. Yeah, you're not wrong. The more we think and speak a certain way, the more we actually wire our brain to keep responding that way automatically. So what's our part in the story? Well, you can practice self-control. Self-control is choosing to do what's best even when you don't want to. When it comes to choosing your words wisely, that means pausing to think before you speak. There are a lot of times I need to remember that. Yeah, like when mom makes fish for dinner, again. Or your little brother borrows your charging cord and doesn't put it back. Or that kid cuts ahead in the cafeteria line. Or your teacher announces a pop quiz. Don't try to make it happen on your own. When you follow Jesus, God sends the Holy Spirit to live with you and give you the strength to choose your words with kindness and compassion. You can ask God to remind you to slow down before you speak. Yeah, so you can zip it before saying something hurtful. And you can choose to say something kind and healing instead. Use those wordy superpowers for good. You've got that right. See you next time. Eight words. Bye. So, here's the thing. Think before you speak. Choose your words wisely. Because words are like a superpower. They also make for some great games. Uh, for instance, what is uh, bibliophobia? Hmm. Well, phobia is fear. So, fear of baby bibs? Nope. It's fear of running out of things to read. Oh, I feel that one. Thanks for joining us in the Story Lab. See, See you, you next time. time. All right, and what? Oh, you're going to find a new word? Yes, let's see. Let's see. Oh, I like that one. Wow, wasn't that message about grace just amazing? It's like a cool breeze on a hot day. Absolutely, Polly. I'm so happy that Jesus wants us to be gracious. Totally. With grace, we can mend broken wings and soar again. Amen. Hey, Polly, before we move on, can you remind us of this month's big word? 
You betcha. Here it is. God's power has given us everything we need to lead a godly life. 2 Peter 1, dot dot 3a. Once again. God's power has given us everything we need to lead a godly life. 2 Peter 1, dot dot 3a. Wonderful! Now let's see what mischievous antics Reginald and Mr. Phil are up to today. Hey, hey Mr. Mr. Phil! Phil. Hey, good morning, boys and girls. It's Mr. Phil here. It's so good to see you on this lovely, lovely Sunday. We're so excited about the things that we're going to sing today and what we learned about. But first, you know, I want to kind of see who's watching me because sometimes it's hard to see you. And so I brought my special glasses today to see who's watching. Okay, so I'm going to put them on and then let me see who's out there. Um, uh, what, it's kind of blurry. I can't really, I think I need my other glasses to go on top of it and then I can see more clearly. Oh, okay. Hey, yeah, I can see Devin. Hey, Devin, it's good to see you. Yeah, and oh, and there's Zoe. I see Zoe too. And then, uh, and there's Hannah. Oh, Hannah's there. And, and then uh, I, I see Alejo. I think that's Alejo. And wow, I see so many, so many others. Raise your hand so I can see you. And oh yeah, it's, oh, it's so good to see you this morning. Uh, it's, but you know, I, I don't wanna wear my glasses too long because sometimes they kind of hurt my eyes. So I'm gonna put my glasses, special glasses, but it's so good to see you this morning. And I'm so happy that you're there. And you know, like I said earlier, we're excited because we're learning about how Jesus called Peter, a fisherman, to be one of his disciples. And not only that, he helped them catch a whole bunch of fish. And then he was gonna say, then he said, Peter, you've been a fisher of fish, but now you're gonna be a fisher of men. And so, yeah, that's how he called Peter to be a disciple. And so Reginald and Green Gorilla, you know, they love to play Bible stories. So they decided they wanted to go fishing today. So they got the boat out and they got their fishing rods all ready to go. And um, hey, Green Gorilla, what, what's this? Is that fishing line? Oh, it looks like my headphones. Oh, we didn't have fishing line. So you just used my headphones. Okay, that's fine. And Reginald, you got your fishing rod all ready to go there. And uh, yeah, hey, wait, who are these guys up here? They look like pirates. Oh, they're, they're helpers. They're going to help drag in all the fish you're going to catch, Reginald. Okay. Well, they look like pirates to me. Okay, I know, I know. You said they're they're fishermen helpers. Okay, they're not pirates. All right. Well, hey, how about if we do our song this morning? And it's called The Presence of God. And you know, when we're in the presence of Jesus, great things happen. We catch a lot of fish. We're able to... Uh, have peace, the peace of God that surpasses all understanding, miraculous things happen. So even if we're feeling kind of sad, we can feel glad when we're in the presence of God. So let's sing this song, okay? All right, here we go. You can go ahead and keep on fishing, Reginald, it's all right. <laughs> Just sing while you're doing it. Jesus, we live.
that's right, a presence of God. It's such a blessing, such a blessing. Miraculous things happen and we can catch lots of fish. Oh, what's that, Reginald? You caught something? Oh, it looks like Reginald caught something. Hey, let's take a look. Okay, I'm pulling it up for you, Reginald. I'm pulling it up and it looks like, it looks like it's... Oh no, it's Sharky. Oh no, throw it back, Reginald, throw him back into the water. Okay, well, we wanna put the, the fish back in anyway, but you don't wanna bring... Sharky up onto the boat, okay? He might hold it against you. <laughs> anyway, well, boys and girls, have a great rest of your day and a great rest of your week and keep on fishing, okay? Oh, what's that, Reginald? You want me to put down the, the mast? Well, well, you're done playing fishing games, huh? Oh, no. Now you want to play pirate? Okay, Reginald. All right, have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye. Say bye, Reginald and Green Gorilla. Say bye. <laughs> Mr. Phil always brings such joy to our heart. I bet the babies have so much fun with him. They sure do. But Polly, you bring such joy to us all too. Oh, shucks. Can you pray us out, Teacher Sarah? Sure thing, Polly. Let's bow our heads. Dear God, thank you that Jesus wants everyone to follow him. Help us to show that we care by letting go of what's fair. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Hey, Teacher Sarah, do penguins ever dream of flying? Uh, maybe in their own special way, Polly, like flying underwater. <laughs> well, that's one way to look at it. Well, kids, until next time, stay blessed. Bye. Bye.